In the Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol, Alice and Bob securely establish a shared secret key after having mutually agreed upon the prime number P and a generator value alpha. However, this process is vulnerable to a man-in-the-middle attack, where an attacker can intercept and manipulate their communication. Let's explore the algorithm behind this attack and the risks it poses to a secure key exchange. The process begins when Alice calculates her public value A and sends it to Bob. However, Eve intercepts this message. Eve creates her own public value E and sends it to Alice, pretending to be Bob. Alice and Eve use each other's public values to compute a shared secret, which Alice thinks she shares with Bob. In reality, this shared secret is between Alice and Eve. Eve then sends her public value E to Bob, making him think it came from Alice. Bob calculates his public value B and sends it, unaware that Eve is intercepting it. Finally, Bob and Eve use each other's public values to compute a different shared secret, which Bob thinks he shares with Alice. In reality, this secret is between Bob and Eve. As a result, Eve can read messages between Alice and Bob undetected. Worse yet, she can modify their content without their knowledge. Let's look at a scenario where we apply the man-in-the-middle attack. Suppose Alice and Bob agree to use a p-value of 13 to compute the generators of Z star sub 13. After identifying the generators, they select an alpha value of 7. For the private values, we'll use 9, 5, and 11 for Alice, Eve, and Bob, respectively. Let's begin with step number 1 in the algorithm. Recall that Alice will send the value of A to Bob, but Eve intercepts it before it reaches Bob. To calculate the value of A, we'll use the formula A is equal to alpha raised to the power of the private value A mod P. Remember, we said that alpha is 7, the value of A is 9, and the P value is selected to be 13. If we compute 7 to the power of 9 mod 13, we get a value of 8. Remember that this value has been intercepted by Eve. So in step number 2, Eve sends Alice her public value of E, and that's calculated much the same way, where we have alpha raised to the power of E mod P, and let's fill this in, 7 to the power of 5 mod 13. Whatever 7 to the power of 5 happens to be, we take that mod 13, and you should end up with an answer of 11. In step number 3, both Alice and Eve compute the shared secret. But Alice thinks she shares this secret with Bob. To compute the shared secret, we'll call it S sub 1, since it will be different than the shared secret that Eve will share with Bob in a later step. So what we do to calculate the shared secret is we take the value of alpha, raise it to the power of A times E mod P. Now this is the same thing as taking the value of E and raising it to the power of A, which was that private value that only Alice knows. Mod 13. Computing this, you should find that the shared secret between Alice and Eve is equal to 8. In step number 4, Eve sends Bob her public value E, making him think she is Alice. So there are no calculations in step number 4. Let's move on to step number 5. In step number 5, Bob calculates his public value B. We'll calculate this by taking alpha, raising it to the power of lowercase b, mod P. Let's fill this in. We have 7, and recall the value of lowercase b was 11 mod 13. Now, if you compute this, you'll end up with a value of 2. And this gets sent to Eve without Bob realizing it. In step number 6, which is the final step, Eve and Bob compute another shared secret. We'll call this shared secret S sub 2. And again, it's calculated by taking alpha, the value of B, times the value of E, mod 13. Now notice the difference between this formula and the previous. In the previous, we were using A and E as exponents. And in this formula, we're using E and B as our exponents. And it doesn't matter the order here. We have BE or EB. Now much the same way we calculated the previous secret, we'll take Eve's value of E, capital E that is, 
and raise it to the exponent 11, which was Bob's private value. And don't forget, we're finding that mod 13. So the remainder of this value divided by 13. And it happens to be a remainder of 6. Now just to reiterate, both Bob and Eve share this secret. But Bob thinks he shares this secret with Alice. Now this attack demonstrates how an adversary can intercept and manipulate communications in an unsecure channel. This highlights the importance of additional security measures, such as things like authentication to prevent a man-in-the-middle attack. So the next time you're asked to input your phone number or to authenticate a login, be mindful that there may be a man-in-the-middle attack, and those features have been proven to prevent an attack such as this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comment section below.